What's up everybody? Welcome to a new YouTube video. In today's video, we're going to be talking about using photos that are in the public domain and if they are allowed by Redbubble. So yesterday I posted a video right here that's titled the easiest Redbubble sales strategy ever. And basically what it was is where I was showing you guys this website called Unlimited Photos. And what you can do is you can sign up for their one-time payment plan and utilize these photos as if you actually took these photos and utilize these photos in your um, uh, in your Redbubble stores and sell them on duvet covers, sell them on puzzles, sell them on all different kinds of products. And not even just Redbubble, but you can use this for Zazzle, you can use this for T Public. Uh, you can use this for a whole lot of different products out there. You could even do this with, um, d you know, creating your own print-on-demand store that is your own entity outside of these platforms where you own your own website. And you can sell these photos, um, you know, as things that you're printing on merchandise. And this is strictly v allowed on these platforms. Now, the cool thing about this and the interesting thing about this is we had a comment of somebody asking, you know, there's a lot of conflicting information out there on the internet uh, about photos that are in the public domain. So I want to be clear, when you're getting, when you're paying a subscription like this, this is not considered the public domain. Every time you download an image and you upload it to one of these platforms or you decide to go with print on demand, um, this is not what's quote unquote public domain. You have a license to do this and you, the license is granted by unlimited photos, right? And the reason why I'm speaking about unlimited photos specifically is because like I said, um, they're just the resource that I personally use to access a whole bunch of different photos uh, to put on puzzles, like I said, duvet covers, etc. The only difference is, is I'm not paying monthly for these tools. I'm paying a one-time uh, cost. I pay one time $59 and I get access to this website for free forever. And there's over 12 million photos. So essentially, what I could do is, you know, in, in theory... Uh, I could just continue keep posting stuff like this and make money doing that. Now, something that I do want to share is if you're interested in joining this website for paying a one-time payment price of $59, um, I'll leave that link in the description. If you go over here to pricing on this website, you will not have that deal available. That deal is not available to the public, um, but I do have that link available just for you guys. So that $59 uh, plan... Uh, that $59 payment is a one-time payment, and you can get it by accessing the link in the description. Okay, once again, it is not publicly available here on their website, but they have access to a whole bunch of different images, right? And so what you could do is you can use images like this on a puzzle. You could, like, use it on a whole bunch of different products. Where people start to go wrong is where they go with the public domain products, now, the uh, images. Now, here's the thing with public domain images, it does vary, and I'll explain what I mean by that. If an item is in the public domain, that means technically you have the legal right to utilize it. Now, I'm no lawyer, so if you want to really consult with a lawyer on this, you should go ahead and do so. I'm not giving you lawyer advice, but if an image is technically in the public domain and you're 100% sure that it's in the public domain, then the the company does not own the trademarks or the previous owner does not own the trademark to it after a certain period of years. I think the number is about 15 years or something like that or 24 or 14 years. I, I can't remember the exact situation, but as I recall from law class, if an image, like I said, or a trademark is in the public domain... It is something that is trademarked, and after a certain period of years, whether that be 14 years or whatever number it is, um, it will essentially relieve itself from the from the trademark, and it is now in the public domain, meaning it is uh, owned by the public to be used freely by the public. Now, here is where things run into issues with Redbubble's policies, and I'll explain what I mean. Redbubble has specific rules on not using two things, stock footage and getting reported, okay? So when Redbubble mentions stock footage, they're specifically talking about things that are in the public. Now, we all know that many people on Redbubble do bend the rules, and they do do things that they shouldn't be doing, and they get away with it. Well, the reality is, is that Redbubble can't check every single person's work. 
They can't do it, and it's impossible to do it. Unless they had some sort of artificial intelligent software that can do it, they wouldn't be able to do it themselves. So what they do is they set these policies in place. And what they do is they have a uh, kind of like a report style basis. And what that means is that let's say I go to the public domain and I find an image that I like and I post it, but yet 10 other people posted it, they can technically report my design and my design will get taken down even though from a legal standpoint we both have the same uh, power over that image legally speaking. Okay, but not necessarily on Redbubble. See, Redbubble specifically looks at designs and says, if somebody reports you, you're going to your your design is going to be taken off the platform unless you can prove otherwise. Now, what that means is that let's say, for example, this image was in the public domain. Okay, let's just say this this design here was in the public domain. Now, is it in the public domain? I have no idea, but let's just say it is. If this image was in the public domain, and let's say Sally uploaded this image before I did and she gets angry that I uploaded it because I'm gaining so much market share from her and I'm getting all the sales well what she could do is she could technically report it and say hey I uploaded this before him it's not fair and they ca they will take my design down that's not a negotiation now the reason why I specifically recommend this company you go with unlimited photos is because they're always adding more content, right? And their content is very vast and very wide. For example, I could search for the picture mountains here and I used this example uh, yesterday. If I search for mountains here, so many, so many beautiful images that are constantly being updated. It's highly unlikely that anybody is we're going to have some overlap in images. Very, very highly unlikely. There are thousands and thousands and thousands upon thousands of posts. If you look here, how many images do you think are on this page? 50, 60, 100, 40, whatever the number is. If you look down here, there's over 3,223 pages and or even more. I mean, who really knows how many more? Let's go ahead and scroll down here. 3,223 pages uh, just for the word mountains, right? And we could go on for days uploading photos. And these are, once again, not public domain images, and it's not stock footage. It's technically licensed images that you have the complete right to utilize for that one-time payment. So the, the people that are mentioning that you can use public domain images, they're not wrong, but they're also not right. They don't tell you the full story. What the full story is, you are allowed to use public domain images. The problem is, is that if you cannot prove to Redbubble in the event that somebody reports your design that you are the creator, which you're not because it is in the public domain, then it will be taken down and that could cause your account to ban get banned. This is why I tell people, why even risk the process? With a one-time payment of $59, I can create thousands and thousands of images and thousands of products, right? So here's an example, for example, of this mountain goat. I can take this and put it on a puzzle. I could put this on a picture, for example, for a poster or a print, right? I could do this with this photo as well, with this photo, and the list goes on and on and on, right? And... This is separate style from the designing. If you guys are familiar with the design course from autopilotpassiveincome.com, which is our website, if you head over here to POD design course, which is one of the links at the top here, this is the course that shows you how to do the specific designs. It's not the same as uploading images, okay? So you want to be aware of this, that the setup is completely different. Now, if you're going to be using the POD design course to create your 60 designs, and I actually showed how to create 60 designs, or I actually created 63 designs live in a period of 34 minutes, and the clock was counting, so it's not like I'm, you know, making this stuff up here. It's all in the course. If you're going to be using images that are in the public domain that are free, what you need to do is you need to try as much as humanly possible to customize those images. Now, if you know exactly what I share in the course, that's not what we do in the course. We do not utilize images that are in the publicly public domain. We use commercialized 
legal images that we can use because we want to speed up the process. If you guys remember, when I specifically talk about the POD design course, the three elements are speed efficiency, quality, and productivity. Without speed efficiency and quality, we'll never get productivity. And how do we measure productivity? We measure that based on sales. So if you guys are interested in getting sales, the best thing you could do is go not only quickly, but add quality. If you're utilizing products that are in the public domain or free images that are in the public domain, you're going to take the speed efficiency out of it, even if the quality is there. Now, most times the quality isn't always there and the desirability isn't always there. So, for example, you have to think logically if uh, let's just say assuming that this was a public domain style image, what can you really do? What is the maximum output you could do with a, a public domain style image? And it just depends on, you know, the situation. There are many, many people who have seen in the comments of not only my YouTube videos, but so many other people's YouTube videos that say, hey, I got this image from so-and-so website. I got this image from XYZ website. But the problem is those websites are public domain websites. They upload them and then they lose their accounts. Because what Redbubble does is when you first create an account, they go through a testing or a trial phase. And actually, a lot of people have reported this to be true uh, through their personal experiences. And I've actually seen a lot of people comment this on my YouTube channel where they'll create an account. They'll start uploading images from the public domain. Something will happen. Either they'll get reported or their whole entire account will be taken down. And then what happens is when they go and try to create a brand new account, even if they don't upload images within a period of minutes to a day, their account gets taken down even if they don't upload anything. And they're they're literally banned permanently from the platform, from the Redbubble platform where they're never allowed to upload a single design. And what Redbubble does this, and there's a reason why Redbubble does this, is because they want to keep the spammers out as much as they possibly can. And during the period of time that you first create a Redbubble account, what could potentially happen is they put a permaban on your account. And what a permaban means is that you're permanently banned from ever designing. So if you are going to decide to use images in the public domain, understand that you are taking a risk and that risk might be valuable to you. You never know. But in this case, if you're asking me personally, anybody with a logical sound mind realizes that if you're going to be doing print on demand, it is not a sprint, but it is a marathon. You want to take as much time as you possibly can without rushing the process. And when I mean what I mean when I say uh, take as much time as I po you possibly can, don't get it confused. We have to be obviously proactive in our work. But what, what I mean is we don't want to sacrifice the safety of our future on the platform just to have the ability to post designs. Okay, because what a lot of people do is what they'll get, they'll, what will happen is they will become very, very eager with their uploading and they'll start uploading things that uh, have been used and abused by other people that are in the public domain. And then they'll get their account not only deleted, but they'll become suspended as a whole and they'll never be able to create another account on Redbubble again. In fact, just a few weeks ago, somebody commented, they said, um, They've created a total of six accounts with Redbubble, and every single one got deleted in less than a week. Another person said four accounts they created, and every account got deleted. So, once again, you have to ask yourself, is it worth it to go for quote-unquote public domain images? The reason why I say it's not worth it is because if you go to a platform like this, or this for example, and the reason why I say th this one is the best one is because, like I said, from a money standpoint, there are other platforms that cost $20, $30, $40 a month. This platform is a one-time payment of $59. There's a huge difference there, guys. One-time payment, you're saving th hundreds of if not thousands of dollars, because over the years that adds up, right? And even let's even take the course of three months. You're going to be spending three more than three, uh, more than sixty dollars in a period of three months on other softwares than you are on this, right? Um, and that doesn't even matter what platform you're using. You could be using any platform out there. So just be aware uh, of these of these kind of numbers here. Now, with that being said. 
like I said, you uh, if if somebody does report your work, which that you know it's unrealistic. It's probably never going to happen. But let's just say you post a design like this and somebody reports it. Well, you can prove that you actually own it because in every email where where um they notify you that something got taken down, a piece of art got taken down, you can prove otherwise. You can say, hey, nope. I own this image legally. I have the right to use this image. Here's my license. Okay, so that's something that you could do in case you do get um, in case you do get reported. But I can tell you this for a fact, guys, that I've been doing this, and not a single one of my designs have been getting down reported. Now, something that I will say is just because you have you know, over 12 million of these photos available to you doesn't mean you should neglect the idea of still designing photos, okay? And we're actually going to talk about this in the future, about what's better, designing or images. But you want to keep in mind that you are still a business. You are still a successful person. And what a successful person does is they try to... Uh, rectify their weaknesses and make them strengths. What is going to happen is invariably, the more you use stuff like this, your accounts will become better. But you're going to be lacking a skill and lacking a, a, a truly, really, that's really the only word, a quality of skill when it comes down to actually designing. When I say designing, I'm talking about creating your own designs, okay? And what's going to happen is, is you're going to completely forget about designing. What you're going to do is you're going to keep uploading things like this. You want to have a good content mix in your portfolio. And when I say content mix, I don't necessarily mean you need to have images and designs on one account. You can create multiple accounts, as I've always recommended on Redbubble, with different niches, different themes. So, for example, you can have one Redbubble account, as I'm doing, with animal-related content, right? So, with animal-related content, I'll put up pictures of animals, and I'll also do designs of animals, right? If I'm bored that day and I don't want to design, I'll put up pictures. Now, what I will say is that, for me personally, the design process is faster, Okay, and I and I sp say specifically the design process is faster because if I'm going to go and download every single image, for me to download 60 images, that doesn't take too much time, but I have to upload every single one and I have to make sure the product fits accurately on each uh, product. So I have to fit it accurately on t-shirts, I have to fit it accurately on duvet covers, on duffel bags, etc., and there's only so much time we have in the day. And so for me, with the system that I use in terms of speed and productivity, designing is going to be the most optimal way. And if you guys want a helping hand with designing uh, when it comes down to Redbubble and creating designs not only quickly but efficiently with high quality, I'm going to recommend the design course, and I'll leave that course link in the description box down below. And if you guys are interested as well, we do have the Redbubble tagging course as well available. Now remember guys, these courses, as they gradually get updated and there's more content being added, the cost will increase. Currently, each course is $39.99, and we have a total of 30 episodes on each, okay? On the POD design course comes with a significant amount of bonuses, and if you if you do want to learn about that, you can go ahead and jump onto this webpage. Like I said, I'll leave the link in the description for you guys to go ahead and check it out, and actually watch this video because you'll find out exactly what you're getting when it comes down to the actual course, alright? So I'll thank you guys for watching, and I'll talk to you guys later, alright? Peace out, bye.